up, Dibbles? Get all back to answer some more goddamn questions. Questions we're going over today. All right, on the fucking video. Saying you like Nickelback is the equivalent of a grown man saying, I collect Barbie dolls. Sure the fuck is, goddamn. Post three weeks ago. Creed is another one. Tootie <laughs> the Blowfish, for sure. Like, that's, you may as well be 50 years old and be like, hey, Jane, oh, yeah, you know, I, I collect Barbie dolls. I'm like, fuck? It's literally the equivalent when you say you like shit like that. It's just, to, to me, mind blowing. Why is it grown man listen to that bullshit? All at the bottom, uh, don't see question marks, but laughing face. So after Chadley B again, goddamn, he usually says some fucking funny shit. Check out that uh, fucking service to light you up, Chadley. Fucking knock your goddamn socks off. Make sure to give that a re-listen, goddammit. What does he say? Laugh out loud. The evil incarnate guy is an actual KKK member. <laughs> Good call, J-Dog. Did I say he was an actual? I didn't say he was an actual KKK member, did he? Did I? I mean, um, so the thing is with evil incarnate, I mean, I mean, if he's a KKK member, I, I you're that to me is fucking like complete hypocrisy because it's like, isn't the KKK, aren't they Christians and they're anti-Christian? Uh, now I will say this. I, I definitely get the vibe that uh, he's more on the fucking racist side, the band, because things I've heard. Now I didn't know that until much later on. Even like when we first put out the release, Blackest Hymns of God's Disgrace, I think there are um, maybe some racial parts here and there. Again, this when that album came out, that was early two thousands. This wimpification was nowhere near to the degree it is now. I, it just went right over my head. Didn't see it. Didn't, again, unless it was literally like, yeah, Lynch's complete dead ass obvious like fucking vaginal Jesus. I thought nothing of it. So I think there might be on there. I know on later shit they throw it in here. A lot of the saints, it's just Satanism, and that's what I first heard. That's what I first got. Uh, but we put out the blackest hymns of God disgrace LP. It was one of the. I want to say that was the first 12 inch vinyl we did. Again, all this shit blurs together me, but it's, it's very, very early on. So I think that might be the very first LP we did. Uh, the first vinyl release we did was Nunslaughter Sentinel Split 7 inch. But the first 12 inch, I think it was Evil Incarnate, Black as Hymns is God's Disgrace. At that time, knew nothing about racism. Like, nobody even talked about that stupid shit. You know what I mean? Nobody, unless it was, again, I guess it's Vaginal Jesus or something. Nobody brought it up. Um, what's funny about those type of people, though, is. They talk about, like, when they refer to, like, the Satanism and shit, like, like the NSBM stuff, talking about Hitler and racism and Satanism all in one. It's like, dude, what are you guys talking about? Hitler, was, wasn't he, like, wasn't he either Christian or Jewish himself? Like, uh, one of the white light religions. He had nothing to do with Satanism. That's for goddamn sure. How, how are you guys equating it? It just goes to show the mentality of those people, just how fucking stupid they are. It has no, they, they don't even, they're, they're not even hand in hand. So it's like, I never understood that fucking dumb shit, so. But as far as actual guys, again, I've heard of racial shit years and years later that they are. Um, again, I don't really follow them care, and I, from what I get the vibes that they are, whatever, that's their, whatever, that's their fucking problem. Uh, I think it's stupid as fuck, uh, but that's on them. Uh, Bing Boom Pow, question. If you could pick four bands to put together for a tour, who would you pick, Rabra? Pretty much answered that up before multiple times, so skip that. Mike Wilder, Lincoln Park, Limp Biscuit, Crazy Town, question mark. Never heard of Crazy Town. That's for little girls and trans women. Yep, yep, yep. Real men are listening to the raw and heavy stuff like Soundgarden. <laughs> Allison Chains and Nirvana, Pantera, question mark. That's just noise and screaming. Who the fuck says that? I mean, to, to me, they're, it's all for fucking uh, pussies. I mean, all that shit is in the uh, is in the same goddamn boat to me. Who who's saying otherwise? Granted, why am I even fucking? Well, I don't know because the Lincoln Park guys, those were the same fucking people as listen to Pantera, Nirvana, and all that bullshit. At least me growing up, it was same type of fan base. Live Eternal, a bunch of question marks. Are there any cringy bands you liked when you were young? You keep in the collection for nostalgia. Cringy bands. <sighs> It, for me, no, but I mean, I guess like people consider six feet under, but again, that is so fucking annoying because it's these same fucking idiots that like, dude, if you like everything by sarcophago, you have no business ripping on um, six feet under for going because like, listen to those later rounds, they went crappy. Yeah, but so did sarcophago. So did Iron Maiden. There's lots of guys. I like every Maiden album. It's like, but most people don't. And what I'm getting at is there's a lot of people. They'll be like, yeah, I don't like Six Feet Under because 
man, do you hear that later shit? Okay, but their first three albums, or at least the first album, minimally is good. Like, wh- all these bands like Iron Maiden, but, but these same guys, what I'm saying, they'll say that. They'll like like the first four or five Iron Maidens, and they're like, oh, yeah, those later Iron Maidens are terrible. It's like, why do they get a pass then? Since they went crappy with Six Feet Under Don't. So I don't consider Six Feet Under cringy. I would if I fucking had whatever their last, their latest albums are. That would be cringy as fuck. Uh, but I think some people would consider that. But again, I just think that's stupidity. I mean, I don't think anybody thought if you older devils ever there, don't don't come over here if you're 20 years old saying anything fucking stupid. You weren't even alive when this shit came on, so shut the fuck up. When Haunted came out, I don't think anybody thought that was cringy. I've heard some people say, ah, it's not as brutal as Cannibal. Ah, it's too slow. Ah, it sounds like obituary. Ah, it's boring. I've heard that. But who's that looking fucking barns ridiculous? Ha ah, ha ha, Scooby Doo, blah, blah, blah. No, there was none of that shit going on back then. Um, at, at the very worst, it was what I just said. Boring and just this kind of sounds like obituary, that type of shit. But most people in the death metal scene thought it was at least pretty good. So, and then, again, I mean, I like like early Dave Uborg and shit like that. I guess some people consider that cringy now. Funny as fuck, though, back in that, any black metal guy back in early 2000s, 90s, I don't, I don't think I knew a single fucking one that didn't like him that was a black metal guy. Unless they were kind of like the purely like um, more, I guess, the Morris black metal, the arch goats, the blasphemies, things like that. If they were strictly that kind of like I got like like Dave from Met, uh, Void Meditation Cult, he'd fall in that category. There was those, but they were few and far fucking between. At least in Cleveland, they were because like, he was he was the only one I know that was basically only into that stuff. For black metal wise, he likes fucking traditional death metal too, like Immolation, Morbid Angel. I know he liked that Sinister. I know he liked those bands. Um. So I guess maybe then, but I don't, to me, I don't consider it cringy. I just think when I hear that, it's, it's somebody that's probably, somebody that's saying that shit is somebody that's young and dumb, dumb in my opinion. Thesis Thomas, scary music question marks, ha ha ha. Yeah, people say, uh, I've, I've heard silly ass fucking shit like that. Put on Diamanda. Gallus Litanies of Satan. Check that shit out. That's some sh- shit right there, bro. Never heard of it. Uh, Josh Death Trash. J Dog. Question, brah. Have you tried apple cider vinegar and lemon water for detoxing? I have uh, a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar with mother uh, every single day. I mix it before I go to bed. I have it with uh, water, my fiber lies, uh, a collagen, a moringa powder. I shake that up and I go uh, right before I go to bed. Shake that up. And uh, and then lemon. I actually put a like a water here. I always have a lemon in all my water throughout the day, always. So yeah, I use it every single day. Now all this detoxing bullshit. It's for the most part is horse shit. Just so you know, guys, it just has general good health benefits. It's like for gut health, um, and just helps with digestion, stuff like that. It's this this detoxin, like all these toxins are falling on your body. Your body has a natural detoxing fucking mechanism as fucking is. So that's kind of that's more hippie fucking bullshit. A lot, like I said, I think those things are good for you, but this whole detoxing and shit, just shut the fuck up. What, what the hell are you putting in your body that's so goddamn fucking toxic? When I hear detoxing, I think of bodybuilder like guys coming off their massive cycle because they got done com- competing. They come off for come off like eight to ten weeks. That's detoxing. It's like, yeah, you're putting fucking super physiological massive doses of fucking chemicals in your body to get ready for a show. That makes sense. Maybe you're just a regular joke. Detox. Get the fuck out of here. Big Boom Pow, question. I fucking hate butt thrash like anthrax and municipal waste. What's some of your favorite thrash, J-Dog? Pretty much answer that. I mean, I like, <laughs> I like some butt thrash anthrax. First two, first two albums, for sure, to me, by, by butt thrash anthrax. I've never heard that line, but it's pretty goddamn funny. Uh, I mean, yeah, the first two anthrax albums, dude, I think those are fucking fantastic. Matter of fact, I think the first two anthrax, if I want the big four, I think that sent Megadeth home on a stretcher. Granted, I like the first two Megadeths. I do. I own them. I like them. But I think the first two Anthrax are way fucking better. Um, I like the third one, too. It was the third one Among the Living. After that, yeah. what was the fourth one? Was that uh, State of Euphoria, right? That was getting kind of... Uh, and then Persistence of Time, I remember that being third fucking city. Granted, it's been 20 years since I fucking heard it. Uh, but it's the, as far as other thrash that I like, um, I've said it a million times. Um, sacrifice, 
Blood Feast. You know, man, I never, I always forget to mention it. Somebody brought it up in the comments. It's Morbid, Morbid Saint. Um, their fucking debuted out. That was fantastic. That was some violent thrash, too. That sends pussy ass fucking Metallica home on a goddamn stretcher. But uh, Morbid Saint was a fucking another killer ass fucking thrash band. But um, I mean, Sacred Reich, Ignorance, and Surf Nicaragua, even like American Way, those thrash albums. And then, you know, and I, and I do like Don't Get Around the First Four Metallicas and one or two Megadeths. And then uh, tons of other thrash bands that I've, that I've, I've mentioned many, many times on here. But I definitely want to throw in that Morbid Saint because it's funny. I think they're one of the better fucking uh, just the just the violent thrash. You know and I mean, not that pussy high school thrash. I guess what you call butt thrash sends that shit home on a stretcher. But I mean, I wouldn't say that they're obscure. Most people, to me, kind of if you claim if you've been listening to this twenty years plus, they're kind of another band. It's not in like the sadistic intense now of God Camp where you're a fucking questionable poser if you never heard them. But it's definitely like. If you've been this long enough, you, you, know, you haven't heard them yet. I mean, uh, it's, it should have made it by your way, but it's still kind of questionable, but I don't consider that obscure by any means, especially because it's been reissued several times. Uh, the most re recent reissues were by High Roller Records. It looked really fucking nice, too. We got the CDs in. I don't know if we still have them in stock. I don't think we do, actually. Check the site. I don't know. Uh, he did CDs and LPs, and both were really nice. And uh, I definitely picked up an LP. He did did uh, two different colors. I think I picked up a splatter vinyl. Because the one I had an LP, I think mine was a bootleg LP, which I still have for the song uh, Scars. Was it the LP or CD? One of them. I think it might be the LP, but instead of <laughs> instead of Scars, it says Stars. <laughs> Fucking jabroni put this out. The Stars. Like when he says, was like, how did you not know what the fuck the lingo was? <laughs> so that's kind of funny. But then, and I had a, a the first CD pressing I have. I'm, I can't remember if it's official. It's one of those. Like I said, for bootlegs, don't even always know. I own it to this day. I, it kind of looks like it could be a bootleg, but it kind of looks like it could be one of those half ass reissues by one of the big boy labels type shit that they, there's very little info. You're like, this looks like trash. But that was the only pressing that came out. Now, the, the, but the high roller records version, that, that's, that's a nice pressing. So if you don't own it and you want to get it, you just go with the high roller records of version CD, LP, whatever, and you, and you'll be set. That's the, the nicest version you're going to get. So. Mr. Slorante, question mark, J-Dog, obviously nothing is heavier than pants here, <laughs> but seriously, do you, do you not like any of their songs? No, they're fine. Some of their songs, yeah, they're, to they're, to they're totally fine. Like, I think their best song from what I know, and I haven't listened to them years, was the uh, title track, The Great Southern Trend Kill, the actual title track. I remember that being a pretty good song. The problem is the rest of them, I remember them having these... Not not ballad songs, but just shit where like this is just trash. What am I listening to? Um, not all of them, but a good handful. Like this is just and then other songs just that were more the upbeat metal songs, just kind of boring. Uh the song Walk, I can't stand. That thing is just goddamn just tough guy, but you're not a tough guy fucking song. And all these all these idiot football fucking fans are listening to that that just that just screams fucking douche canoe. Um Cowboys from Hell, that title track, you know, it's, it's it's good for what it is. Uh, again, I never said that Pantera's like terribly musically and I hate them. It's just their fucking fan base is annoying as fuck. It, again, take a band like Morbid Saint. If they're walking around, especially in the 90s, holy fuck yeah, man, Pantera's so fucking heavy. Holy shit. Heaviest thing they heard, dude, Morbid Saint would fucking rip their goddamn face off like goddamn sandpaper. But again, no interest in even hearing it. They, they fucking begun at Pantera and stopped at fucking Pantera. It's like, if you liked heavy music and were like moved by, like, what the fuck? Why don't you know Blood Feast? Why don't you know Morbid Saint? Like, they don't even know shit like Overkill and stuff. Not all of them. Some of them do. They'll go, but it, come on, you know, Overkill. Yay. Okay. Fucking, I was not goddamn impressed. But I'm saying, a lot of them bozos didn't even know that. Not the ones I went to school with, so don't come over here saying they fucking stupid. Because I know goddamn well. When I was in high school, there was not one other motherfucking coot canoe in there that knew who the even knew who the fuck Overkill was. Deer and headlights taking them out. And I know because I seen Overkill back then, and that's a band I would mention. And there was not one motherfucker heard. Sure heard a fucking band there, though. That's all I'm saying. The fans are just beyond fucking annoying, and it's just packed to the hills of fucking musical posers. Because again, if you like metal music, and again, Pantera is a metal band, why why would you have stopped there? Because 
when I first heard about Pantera, shit, that was my early metal going career. To be honest with you, I might have, I can't remember, I think I did. I might have heard Pantera before I heard Cannibal Corpse. So it was very early on when I heard it. There was no way Jose, like, I'm like stopping there. It, it didn't even cross my fucking mind. Like, you know what I mean? It's so that's what I'm fucking talking about. It's because you just automatically know if they're saying shit like that. Oh, yeah, what's heavier than Pantera? Pantera's the heaviest band or anything of similar to that lingo. Or I like heavy shit, man. You know, I like the fucking Pantera and shit. Those people totally exist. Don't come over here saying anything fucking stupid like that because I've met them hand over fist times. Even out and about in my adult years, I've heard them say that. You know, I like heavy shit like Metallica and Pantera. Dude, those words shouldn't even come out of your mouth. You can mention them, but saying you like heavy shit, well, you don't because you wouldn't be mentioned. But when I think of heavy stuff, people in the know, nobody's using those as examples. They could say, yeah, I like tons of fucking metal. I mean, my two favorite metal bands are Pantera and fucking Metallica. That would be an acceptable line. Oh, so but do you like do you like obituary? Do you like incantation? Do you like deceased? Do you like morbid saint? Do you like blood feast? Oh yeah, yeah, of course, man. Who doesn't like that shit? That would be an acceptable fucking response. But it never is with them. That's the problem. But yeah, some of their songs are fine. Bowen Revels, question marks. Will you be at the Ar Arnold and Columbus J Dog? Question marks. I'd like to, but no. I especially like to go to the show because this year's fucking show is fucking awesome. It's so um, time I'm recording this. I'm recording this on February 28th, 2023. And it's, uh, so it'll be this Saturday. So it'll probably, well, the Arnold will be over probably by the time this fucking video is posted. Um, but I'll definitely be watching it on Saturday. That's for goddamn fucking sure. I was trapped in the middle of nowhere growing up and only had access to my stepdad CDs, Nickelback included. Whew! Times are tough, bro town. Until I can listen to free internet radio apps. Yeah. My sympathy goes out to you, bro, bro. Ken the Cat Boss. Vlad Tepe's son or Nickelback daughter? Question mark. <laughs> you like, I should choose? First off, I didn't know fucking either one of them had kids or whatever. <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go on a limb. I'd probably say Nickelback daughter because uh, who knows? Maybe she's fucking actually hot. Fuck, what am I going to do with, what am I going to do with some dude that's, Fucking son of a Vlad Tepes. What the fuck do I give a shit about him? What am I going to do with him? He's gonna, he provides zero value to me. <laughs> so, Paul Krantz, j Dog, do you ever get annoyed going to shows? Sure do. Standing behind three or four canoes just holding up their fucking, their fucking phones filming the damn show. Oh, yeah. Seen them loud and clear. Instead of just being there at the moment and join the show. Oh, yeah. I've seen them. Know exactly what I'm talking about, goddammit. Part of it is, too, is because, like, why are you holding up your phone a lot of times Maybe just to take a quick photo I can see, but they're recording like 30 seconds or so. It just doesn't make sense. It's like, if you're going to record, why not record the whole goddamn show? If it's somebody, and if you're going to do it, you probably want to get something like an eye, like, I don't know, a little stand or something. Who'd want, well, I don't know, maybe on a railing or something where your arms are likely to be holding it. Because who the fuck wants to have their arms up in the, in the air the entire goddamn show? And that's the only way you do to capture the whole thing. But, um, I mean, I don't think it's the worst goddamn thing in a show. It's definitely not as fucking douchey as a goddamn side where it's flat brim like Emperor Decker Cody, but it's it's just kind of um it's usually just some fucking hippie that fucking has it. That's usually what I see for the most part. Decompose, J Dog, what did you think of the new Sanguizio Bog album? Really sounds like late nineties brutal death metal. Uh you know what? I didn't even actually listen to the album. What I have is uh I have the demo C D thing. It came out, it was sent to us or somebody gave it to me. I remember listening, I thought it was okay. I remember when people were talking about it. The first band that popped in my mind, and I had to go back and listen to it, but yeah, it's funny you said late 90s, early 2000s. I was like, this sounds like Discourage California. Now, don't, maybe that's not the band that popped. Maybe it was Devon. One of the bands popped in my mind where I just thought it sounds like this. And But it was a band from, like you said, late 90s, early 2000s um, that I've heard multiple, multiple times. And people were calling it like Caveman Brutal. They had Caveman something they're getting the title. I'm like, Caveman, what are you talking about? I've heard this like 10 million times. 20 years ago, like, so kudos to them that they're getting, that they're getting popular and shit, but I, I didn't understand. I'm like, I, like you guys know, I've said the channel, I was like, I was already, I'm not going to use the word burnout, but definitely over it by 2005. I'm like, all these bands sound the same. I was like, all, all, everything coming out now from 2005 on, there's a gem here and there every once in a while of that genre. I was like, but the shit all sounds the same. Then fast forward to 2018 or whatever, when they started, like, oh, this again? I was already done fucking 13 years ago with this shit. Because it's like, yeah, it's already been done again and again and again and again. 
then they're kind of, I guess it stopped. I don't know if it ever stopped because I'm assuming that's what a lot of Severed Records bands and stuff sound like. And he's been just doing stuff consistently throughout the years. I haven't listened to 90% of it, so don't quote me on that. Maybe it doesn't. But I just assume that it's of that genre. But anyways, it, it, pe- the, the talk was, man, this is like, a about Oh, my God, such, such original brood. I'm like, yeah, I hear it all. I'm like, what are we talking about? I've heard this thing before. So it's original my fucking ass. What are we talking about? I thought the demo CD was okay. It's I have it in my thing. I listened to it. I only listened to it once. Uh, but that was the first thing that popped in my mind. Oh, this stuff again. I heard it before. Not bad. And then, but then they're blowing up, and I saw that. Yeah, you, I, what did they call them? Caveman? It was Caveman something. I'm like, it's got some new lingo. How about just use Discourse California or whichever band they they sound like? It was a Rodequin Devourment. I want to say it was Discourse, uh, but first band on mind. Hey man, my fucking ass. Discourse was doing this fucking 25 years ago, so I don't know if the fucking guys are late to the game as far as I'm concerned. Comes with the energy to the beginning. When the cowboys get answered in the morning, later, goddamn it. 